Hey, this is Lauren Zagary with Motion Science, and today I'm going to share with you how I organize all of my creative projects. Quick disclaimer before getting into the video. After years of working in After Effects professionally as a motion designer, the structure I'm about to show you is the way that has worked for me. Feel free to adapt any step to your own projects and creative needs. First, let me note the importance of staying organized when it comes to your creative projects. Having a streamlined way to work helps you when you revisit projects and others when you're part of a team of designers. People will thank you and you will thank yourself later. I'll start off by showcasing the way I like to work for most of my creative projects. Here is my After Effects layout. On the left hand side, here's my project panel. Here I keep my assets, my compositions, and my pre-comps. Right under is the info panel where I have access to color information from my composition. I like to keep my effects on the left of my composition and everything character related, paragraph, align, anchor point is on the right. If I need to track anything, I like to have my tracker panel right under my effects. When it comes to color, I keep my scopes easily accessible if I need to use them. With this out of the way, let's see how we can create a project template. When you first open up After Effects, your project panel will be empty. Here, I'm going to go over the folders I use in every single After Effects project and how to make this a template. Under the Assets folder is where I keep all my footage, illustrator files, audio, CG renders, images, Photoshop files, and textures. I like to keep my main comps under the comps folder and all pre-comps under the pre-comps folder. To make sure this project opens up every time we create a new project, we can make this a template. First, save your scene, then go to Edit, Preferences, and new project. Here you can select the project path, click on new project loads template and hit OK. Now let's go over some of my preference settings. Under general, I like to have center anchor point in new shape layer selected. I also checked on default spatial interpolation to linear and synchronized time of all related items. Under Grids and Guides, I like to make my Proportional Grid Horizontal 3 and Vertical 3 to create a rule of thirds. When it comes to label colors, I like to use red for text, yellow for footage, green for any null control layer, and cyan for any background. The rest default. When it comes to rendering out of After Effects uncompressed files, I like to use a QuickTime format with a Apple ProRes 444 coder. When it comes to project structure out of After Effects, here's how I like to keep my project organized. I like to keep everything related to the project, whether it's PDFs or creative briefs in the Documents folder. The Projects folder is dedicated to all my project files. If I open it, I have a folder for after Effects, one for Blender, one for Element 3D, one for Premiere, and another one for Pure, where I keep all my mood boards. The Media folder is where I keep all assets related to my project. Everything I import into After Effects will be in the Comp Assets folder, while anything referenced will go into the Footage or Image folder. If I end up exporting any textures or comps outside of After Effects for any given project, it will be in the three renders folder. Any final export goes into the renders folder. I recommend keeping this folder structure someplace handy on your computer so you can copy and paste it whenever you start a new project. Now let's get into naming conventions. I took some time to build this composition with two pre comps inside one main comp. Before anything, let me start off by saying that I don't do a lot of vector animation, so I usually don't deal with massive scenes with hundreds of layers and character animation rigs, for example. I like to keep things simple and organized for the work I like to create. One general rule of thumb I like to abide by when I name comps and pre comps and various layers is to use the straight bar character character as a separator. For my main comp, I usually type in main, then the straight bar character, and then the comp name. When it comes to pre-comping backgrounds and shape layers, I usually type in GFX for graphics, then the straight bar character, the layer name, straight bar character again, and PC for pre-comp. 
when it comes to text through Tom. I usually like to type in text, then the straight bar character, then the text player name, straight bar character, and PC for pre -talk. I like to keep these elements in their own respective folders for easy access and overall organization. One last thing I want to mention when it comes to project structure and overall organization is to start creating an asset library for your footage and textures. Having an organized folder structure where you keep your textures and footage makes tackling projects much less daunting. Knowing where certain textures are located on your computer or what pieces of footage can you use and reuse will make the process of getting what's in your head onto the software much quicker. Having a library makes it so you don't have to go through the steps of searching for the right textures every time. Trust me, I've been there. When it comes to assets, you don't need every single tag that's out there. All you need is the right ones you keep going back to and make sure they're versatile enough to use them in a variety of different projects. I also recommend keeping it organized by categories, for example, static versus moving footage and different folders such as paper, grunge, glass, film textures, and so on. One last pro tip for you today is to always use high quality assets for your projects. Using high quality assets gives you the leisure of scaling and positioning textures as you please without quality constraints. I hope you liked this video and learned something new today. If you want to share the way you structure your work, leave it in the comment below. Until next time, this is Lauren Zagari with Motion Science.